Thank you, Dr. Torelli, Mr. Esparza, and Mr. Guamis. Let's begin with, with the first roundtable of the seminar. This roundtable will be focused on pre-commercial procurement. Public procurers can promote innovation acting as technologically demanding first buyers. In addition to improving the quality and effectiveness of public services, this can also help create new opportunities for companies. For this roundtable, we have joining us Ms. Sarah Bedin, Head of Public Administration Practice at the European House Ambrosetti Milan, Italy, Ms. Rosana Alessandrello from the Catalan Agency of Health Quality and Assessment in Barcelona, and moderating this session we have Ms. Anne Furphy, International Project Manager of the Andalusian Institute of Technology. Thank you very much all for joining us. I'll take a minute while we get them situated. And let's begin the roundtable. Thank you. Hello. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is Anne Furphy. I'm representing the Andalusian Institute of Technology. And uh, I would like, first of all, to thank uh, the UAP for the really well-organized uh, session of yesterday and this two-day conference, too. Um, I would like to introduce you to Sara Bedin and Rosana Alessandro, um, who are going to make a two uh, presentation on uh, pre-commercial procurement. Uh, and their different points of view and experiences on the contextualization of pre-commercial procurement at this moment. Um, first of all, let me present you to Sara Bedin from the European House Ambrosetti. Um, she's the uh, head of public administration practice. Uh, her competencies and achievements concern the design and evaluation of innovation support policies and definition and planning of territorial competitiveness and development strategies. Since 2007, she's been working to introduce pre-commercial procurement into Italian research and innovation policy framework and helping contextualize it within the Italian regulations. She is responsible for the activation of the first national pre-commercial procurement in the health technological domain for the Lombardia region in Italy. Let me present you to, to Rosanna Alessandro. Uh, she holds a master's science in electronic engineering and is a specialist in bioengineering. She has accumulated more than 15 years uh, of experience in international uh, companies specialized in e-health technology. Now uh, she works for the innovation area of ACWAS, the Catalan Agency of Health Quality and Assessment, and there she supports the agency uh, for its uh, strategic um, innovative projects and adoption of new procurement instruments such as pre-commercial procurement and um, procurement uh, of, uh, of innovation. Yeah, of innovation, sorry. <laughs> So please, uh, Sarah, could you, you can start and, um, with your presentation. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to ICTIMED partners uh, for this invitation, but more for the important contribution of this project to establish and raise a new culture of innovation. Um, we have started talking about PCP in Maribor. Now I would like to share my point of view on, on this approach that I consider, let me say, one of the most powerful instruments to promote innovation inside public sector. Why I say it is a powerful instrument? Because PCP has a twin relevance, both as innovation-oriented procurement strategies and also uh, as an innovation, a demand-driven industrial policy. From the first point of view, PCP is undertaken to increase long-term effectiveness and efficiency of public expenditure, as well as to improve the quality and sustainability of public services, filtering out technology risk. This is the assumption, the condition. So, is the condition sine qua non to implement PCP? 
From the second point of view, PCP can help and contribute as effect to rise industry innovative performance, broadening SME participation in R&D project, and creating opportunities for company to take international leadership. But also, even if PCP has a twin relevance, PCP have to be implemented with a one unique procedure and approach. What's PCP? PCP concerned the phase before commercialization, the procurement of applied R&D services in between for, uh, from fundamental curiosity-driven research and mass commercialization of new technology innovation. So I can say, I would say that PCP concern innovative performance and brain work. So public procurer by brain work, research activities. These activities could, um, could uh, regard solution exploration, feasibility study, project design, prototyping, development of a limited volume to first product in the form of test series, and most important, the testing and experimentation through a field test. What's not PCP? PCP isn't a supply contract to procure product or services, and nor and is nor um, a work contract. And PCP doesn't include commercial development activities such as industrialization, quantity production, supply, and activities like integration, customization, incremental adaptation, and improvement to existing product or processes. So when <clears throat> PCP implementation is viable and effective, uh, everything starts with a clearly defined need or problem or, cha or challenge. After that, the existence of a market gap must be verified before starting PCP. The public authority have to acquire information from the market to understand if no commercially stable solution exists on the market or the solution that exists in the market exhibit shortcomings which require new significant R&D. The PCP inspired, is inspired by the chance to think alternatively, particularly in the early phase of the process. So the tender does not predefine the technical solution, but he's open to alternative technical ways to address the needs as expressed in functional and performance require. So the supplier can propose alternative and innovative technical solution. This doesn't mean that the problem can be described lightly, but has to be well described to get comparable market proposal. Alternative doesn't mean not comparable. Other, uh, other condition is that the solution needed have the nature of industrial application and it is subject to repeated application and potentially capable of commercial uh, exploitation. Therefore, that the solution needed is potentially amenable to patent protection or other intellectual or industrial protection and EPR management. So what's relevant uh, in PCP? As uh, R&D and innovation required by definition for 99% a creative thinking and innovative capacity, PCP looks for an expected solution. However, the production, delivery, and manufacturing capacity and resource does not detect in PCP. And this means also that is interesting and real possible for SME to participate in PCP. Because um, traditionally, the 
involvement of SME is managed in, uh, by breaking the procurer's requirement into small parts or by encouraging the large supplier to form alliance with smaller partners or to involve SME in project. PCP is different from this point of view for two points. As I told before, PCP requires creative thinking, and this capacity belongs either to small, medium, and large supplier. PCP, the second point is PCP is an R&D procurement with the objective to develop new solutions for public sector problems which, which, uh, for which there are no solution, and this means no customer references. So uh, stringent, stringent qualification requirements don't apply in PCP. And this is the reason for, for what PCP is interesting for me and is more accessible. So um, who can undertake uh, PCP initiatives? The body government governed by public laws, so public companies, municipality, region, engage in public service and that represent the real demand side. I mean that the body that have has the real requirement that the innovative solution should fulfill. And um, because the R&D result constitute the public service offering and they are responsible for the acquisition strategy of the new solution that could be developed as a result of VCP or they participate in public service delivery chain and or they can mobilize beside public procurement the most important demand side instrument in that specific sector to speed up market introduction solution. Think, for example, to the regulation due to encourage public procurers or private procurers to look for innovative solution. Think for the contribution to standardize, to the standardization and certification of product. How PCP is manage and how PCP enable competition during the execution. This is the schema for PCP. It's a stepwise procedure. Only the best supplier that keep meeting the word criteria continue to the next phase. So the number of company gradually decreases in the process, in the phase procedure. As Communication 799 from the European Commission recommend, it's required to retain at least two participating companies until the last phase to ensure a future competitive uh, market. Okay. <laughs> Finally, why we can say that PCP has a central role in promoting innovation. First of all, because PCP creates and strengthens new markets, reducing time to market. If a product or services that a public sector requires is not available on the market, they may encourage suppliers to innovate and develop new technology, knowledge, and products. So the role of public procurement is most influential in the early stage of the life cycle of the product and in promoting emerging, emerging market. During this period of time, the product is in standardization phase, so industry are much more um, open to client-based consultation than they are later when the market and the product, product has been uh, introduced. This role may become even more important in industries where the public sector is the only or the dominant customer. Think, for example, healthcare, and this is the reason for which healthcare is uh, uh, one of the contests, one of the technical domain in which PCP express all his potentiality. Then PCP create additional and spontaneous incentive to innovate. Um, by the suppliers that can better align the product development to fulfill customer need and so shorten reducing the time to market. 
finally, uh, a focus, a brief uh, focus to the situation in Italy. Uh, in Italy, the first attempt of PCP implementation as made by a region, which have also the responsibility of innovation policy. Uh, what has uh, not been well understood, in my opinion, is the fundamental distinction of the role of public the policy maker from the mo role of public purchaser. And the fact that PCPs start from a concrete and real need of public purchaser. It's clear that in some cases, like in health care, these two roles may overlap, think, uh, to the uh, health care sector. And, but in other cases, in cases in which the role is separate, policy maker can surely uh, can give, uh, give a financial support to implement innovative procurement action and to pull demand. To do this, public policy maker can challenge the local public authority to assess need and social change, challenge crucial for the regional economy. But policy makers can uh, so allocate R&D resources on high local priority. This, this is uh, permitted as possible, but the target of this kind of policy is the public sector. The aim is, uh, of PCP is to work fully within European competition law. So a restriction of competition among local, local suppliers is not allowed. PCP is a mutually binding and risk-benefit sharing contract with um, the public purchaser uh, pay a full cost of at the market play, um, price of a, a provision of R&D service by supplier. So these are two mechanisms distinct, and we have, I think, to distinguish these two mechanisms. I have finished and remain for a question. Thank you. <clears throat> well, while uh, they, well, they are loading my presentation, I, I thank uh, the organization to invite me to this uh, session today. It is really interesting. And uh, as you will see, I will um, introduce briefly uh, my organization, then an European project that is uh, really um, a PCP that is uh, happening right now uh, in Europe. And, uh, and um, I will go through, through all, well, my intention was going through a, 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 somehow a definition of PCP, but I see that really Sarah already covered <laughs> all the aspects, so I will somehow um, be shorter on these aspects. So who, who I am? Uh, I'm coming from uh, Aquas, that uh, locally here is more um, known as Ajax. Uh, we just changed the name a few months ago after some changes in the organizations. And uh, we are the agency of the health department here in Catalonia that uh, uh, really um, um, is uh, the, whose main role is create knowledge and assessment from the information that we gather from the healthcare system. So we are the structures that uh, somehow puts the knowledge about the healthcare system in the hands of the main stakeholder in the Catalonia region to uh, why not uh, uh, making policies, take decision of the healthcare services, uh, or um, uh, putting new instruments in place to further instrument, uh, to further innovate uh, uh, in the healthcare. Um, always uh, uh, with the idea that we want to improve the quality and the safety and the sustainability of uh, the, our system, healthcare system. Uh, we have uh, um, three units mainly in our agency. The, uh, um, up to, I would say that uh, here locally most probably the most known one, relevant one, is the ICT one, because it's the one that gives support to all the innovative um, healthcare instruments that have been put in place during the last few years, like the 
eh, historia clínica compartida de Cataluña o la carpeta personal de salud o de, so de personal health record, de electronic health record o de uh, e prescriptions, eh, de la prescripción uh, electrónica y and, and all of this is, um, is maintained and is, uh, we are give, and is complete, uh, continued supported by this agency. And this is also, is the, or also uh, sorry, one item that uh, ICT, the ICTR is looking at is, for instance, also the uh, digitalization of the radiological images. So this is also uh, is the one that uh, uh, takes care of this uh, area. Uh, thanks to this, uh, what we are doing is uh, uh, gathering all the information about the uh, Catalan healthcare service. And thanks to this, we can continuously observe how the system is doing. Okay, so this is really important because we are, doing, we are somehow one of the first uh, regions in Europe doing it. We are few of, the, few of us that we can say, and we are public, public, publicly stating in our webpage how the healthcare provider are doing uh, and uh, uh, what, is, what is the benchmark in Catalonia. So this is quite, quite important. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, we have the ass assessment area. The assessment area is the one uh, that is taking care of assessing, ev ev evaluating, assessing continuously uh, what is happening in our healthcare system, but not only. Also, for instance, in, uh, in the innovation. So, for instance, uh, we are taking part of key European projects and we are the ones evaluating the e-health technologies that uh, are um, developed uh, in, the, in, in the context of this European project, like EPSOS or Renewing Health. These are usually two really key important uh, European projects because the technologies that uh, are, uh, are going to be developed or deployed in the different uh, um, uh, region, European regions are then evaluated by our agency, okay? We are the leading of these uh, work packages. Um, and then we have another, uh, also in the, evaluation, in the assessment area, we are um, not only evaluating so, uh, the system, we are not only evaluating uh, the e-health, but also we are evaluating um, how the innovation processes are impacting uh, the territory. Mm? So we are evaluating, for instance, uh, how um, maybe new instruments or new procedures, new, um, new um, healthcare processes or new instruments to uh, train the professionals are impacting uh, the, the, prof the healthcare professionals, are impacting the society. What, 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 what is the fruits of all the innovation in the Catalan region? Mm? And, uh, and the, the last one is the innovation area. The innovation area, um, I, uh, then I go back to the last one, to the previous one. The innovation area is uh, an area that has three main uh, tracks um, or lines. And, uh, um, and what we do, and I belong to this area, is uh, somehow the first one is to um, um, raise funding to continuously to innovate, to don't stop the innovation in the region. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, in the table before, uh, previous, pre previous table, we, we already said that the economic situation is not so good, but this is, uh, this, we cannot stop to innovate, to improve our services, and to ensure that new instruments are put in place to continuously improve our healthcare system. And uh, so fundraising is important. And fundraising doesn't mean just, uh, means also, most probably, why not, going uh, um, uh, through, uh, I don't know, competitive, uh, uh, to com competitive program, to gather funding, to, uh, uh, to develop uh, projects that are in line with our uh, strategic plan from the health, care, uh, health department. But also means um, new, uh, in put in place new instruments that uh, can, uh, um, can uh, somehow 
increase or enhance our ability uh, to, uh, to work together with the private system, like private-public partnership, like risk-sharing uh, um, instruments, and like risk sh and benefit-sharing instruments, as the pre-commercial procurement and the public procurement of innovation. So we are the ones, somehow, that are supporting the Department of Health here in Catalonia to promote these instruments and to make sure that they can happen and we can continue to innovate. On the other hand, we, uh, we execute project, innovation project, but also we make sure that we, uh, we do it in a, um, in a, in a homogeneous, homogeneous way. So what we want to achieve is uh, uh, not that uh, the different uh, uh, healthcare provider cannot uh, move on with their own innovation plans because uh, the others are doing the same. No, not at all. That's good that we are doing something in common, but make sure that they talk together, they know each other, they know that this experience, is carry, a similar experience is carried out from another healthcare provider, and so instead of re reinventing the wheel every time, uh, you know, sh uh, sharing the knowledge and making sure that we make a step more. So we don't want to centralize at all the innovation in, in the healthcare because we are many stakeholders and we have a very no we are very innovative here in Catalonia. But what we want to make sure is that we we comp we we share the knowledge, we share the experience. And if and if there is someone that is having a very good experience, a successful experience, or a failure somewhere else, we can learn from it. And so we are somehow um, putting in place uh, new, um, new procedures like training the different innovation uh, uh, departments or different uh, uh, healthcare providers to make sure that they know what is happening uh, and how they can int integrate in an open innovation arena with the rest of the healthcare providers. And also um, uh, putting in place new instruments like uh, open innovation platforms. Uh, this is something new that is going to happen in the very next month. That uh, where, where the uh, this uh, experience that are, are sh uh, can be shared can also uh, be an instrument to collaborate uh, and uh, to col uh, and, and why not to make a step further together. Uh, and regarding PCP, I think that uh, Sarah already said everything, so I, I would uh, somehow uh, not, uh, not be so in deep about these slides, but uh, uh, what I would like to go is through the cipher, maybe going back to these slides to give you some more details about the cipher. What, it, what is the cipher? The cipher is a pre-commercial procurement uh, is an European project. First of all, it's an European project, okay? So it is uh, funded by the FP7 program, and it is the very first PCP uh, project um, in the e-health area, in the mobile health, really, uh, taking place uh, um, in Europe. Uh, um, we had some delays. Unfortunately, we had one year of delay, so we could kick off just at the beginning of this year. And, uh, but we are really proud that we are now, we have started. And this means that we can start to, we, can, uh, we are already planning to launch the first call of, uh, of, um, of this PCP in, in, uh, in the very next month. We are different partners, if you can see in the bottom line of the slides, we have, we, we have, uh, we have two partners from Catalonia, Aquas and Tixalut. We have two partners from Finland, Culminatum and VTT. Uh, two partners from Italy, Estaf Centro and Citer Toscana, and one partner from UK, from Manchester, it is Trastec. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, consortium basically is composed by three public authorities. The three public authorities are the ones that will make the procurement. Mm? Uh, that are TIC Salut, Estaf Centro, and Trastec. So the procurement will take place in these three regions. Now, from a formal point of view, uh, because this is something requested by the Commission, there will be one, just one Commission authority uh, commission, uh, launching the call on behalf of these Commission authorities, that is AQUAS. But really, the three Commission authority, the ones that will define their functionality, their needs, and then we evaluate the bidders, and then they will uh, move forward with the, the program, there will be the three. Okay, Aquas will be just the instruments, the instrument. Um, this uh, um, one requirement also from the European Commission is clearly, that's, that's natural, that's obvious, 
uh, taking, uh, um, bringing value to the money already spent in other European uh, projects that have already defined a standard for a cross-border um, electronic health record, for instance. So we need uh, making sure that uh, this, uh, um, our final technology will comply with some standard like EPSOS or uh, um, interoperability, semantic interoperability like uh, LOD2 or, um, and then also other security standards that are not are now uh, visible in these slides. Um, so this is uh, something uh, I would say I, I'm, I'm really uh, excited because uh, it's really one of the um, first PCP taking place in Europe in, uh, because some of them are already taking place in other areas, in uh, smart, uh, smart cities or, um, or assistive technology for elderly. but this is the very first one in ML Health. Uh, if we go through, it, uh, if we go to this slide, back to this slide, so what is going to happen? It's going to happen that the three, um, uh, we, this slide is very similar to the one that Sarah was uh, showing with the fishes, no? That was, were jumping in the different balls. And uh, um, so the, uh, the fishes are, su are different suppliers. And, uh, and um, the, uh, the, with this PCP, we are opening uh, to the SMEs, to the R&D centers, uh, R&D centers that are um, uh, business driving, um, to uh, um, what we call here in Spain UTES, uh, that I don't know the name in English at all, by the way, the, a temporary um, union of organizations um, to bid uh, uh, to, this, to a, a, a specific call in a way that if they, then they can uh, somehow meet the functional requirements and the interoperability requirements that we will define in the call, they can move on up to a stage that they can deliver their prototypes in our pre-production environment. Stop. This is where we stop. Hmm? This is where the pre commercial procurement stops. Then, if we want really to move forward to what is uh, the deployment in, uh, the real, in the production environment, in the real environment of this technology, we need to make another call that is the public procurement of innovation. <coughs> because of this, Catalonia now is uh, really is pushing for the two instruments, because we want to make sure that we can uh, have then this technology also in the, real, in the reality. We cannot stop just in the pre-production. Mm? Um, why uh, th th these are two completely different um, uh, instruments? Uh, first of all, because in this way we can separate uh, somehow the budget, no? We, if we spend the money in the R&D, uh, um, we don't spend all the money that we have in both. I don't know, can I say it's, it's going to be uh, smaller, the project, but uh, uh, we, we, we reduce the risk. And also in this way, we uh, make sure that really the R&D that is developed meets our functional requirements. If uh, one, once we want to go to the, uh, to the deployment and to the production, we will need other uh, capabilities from the industry, not only the R&D. We will need also the ability to deploy, to give support, to maintain. So most probably then this technology will be inherited or will be uh, partners. Uh, we will increase the partnership with other uh, partners, uh, uh, industry players that can do the next step. Mm? But in this way, the SMEs or the R&D centers or the business drivers, again, uh, R&D um, uh, uh, centers can opt uh, to the public uh, market. And in healthcare, this is really needed. So we are not going towards a technology-driven procurement, but we are going really um, to the, a, 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 a demand-driving procurement. What we need will be realized by our uh, bidders. Um, also, another important thing is that if we uh, are three public authorities for, for, from the three different regions, uh, we will be able, uh, most probably, to offer to our bidders, to the ones that will come at a later stage, um, uh, to release, to, to, to produce, to develop a technology, then then uh, will be um, 
most probably adaptable with a, a very, uh, well, adaptable with some effort, but not with so big effort, maybe to a fourth proc uh, public procurement, or maybe to a fifth public uh, procure region. Because at the end, we are already satisfying requirements from UK, from Italy, from Spain, and why not, uh, because also I didn't say this, most, most probably we are also inviting another public procurement from Finland. So they, they really, if we can comply this, uh, uh, these functional requirements, it will be easier for our bidders to comply requirements from another public authority. And this is open a big market for them. This is somehow is something we really believe that can strengthen our, um, our, our SMEs, our, our, um, our providers. Mm? Then during the project also, we will define, since we are already three or four regions, because Finland in, the, in this case really will, be, will have a stronger value, uh, role in the project, uh, we, will, uh, we will be able to define, to start to define a common framework for the mobile solutions um, uh, to, uh, to, um, uh, to become uh, really a standard in, in, in Europe because they will need, uh, uh, we will uh, take, uh, take care of all of the interoperability, uh, security, and cross-border uh, um, uh, requirements. And this is, will be somehow the initial, uh, because clearly will be not the final one, but of the uh, common framework for these solutions. And then the, also the, the last one, it's important in the project, we will uh, evaluate all the PCP process to ensure that this makes sense for, the, for, for not, only, not only for Catalonia, but for, for Europe. Here we are put, uh, with our taxes somehow, we also are paying our R&D projects from Europe. So we want to make sure that this makes sense, that we are not losing money, and this uh, innovative process really have, uh, uh, have value, uh, for, uh, for not only for the public authorities, but also for the market and, uh, and for the uh, providers. So we have now two important milestones that I want to invite all of you to come. Uh, one is uh, the, the Cypher Info Day, June uh, 28th, at the Me Health Forum. is a forum that is taking place here in Barcelona. It's open to everybody. And, uh, and, um, and it's important for us because it will be the day that we can somehow uh, give instructions to the different industry players on how this will happen, how to get prepared, and uh, what they need to know to then to, uh, to, to bid for this call. And uh, hopefully we will launch our first uh, call, uh, at, I'm putting November, well, in autumn, in autumn of this year. Mm, this is what it's in our plans. That's all. Thank you, Thank you very much. I think uh, Mrs. Bedin wants to introduce some tips about the, um, the pre-commercial uh, procurement uh, initiative uh, carry, that is now being carried out in the uh, Lombardia region. Uh, yes, thank you. Before because question. I think uh, your business is university. So I would like to invite to participate to the first PCP in healthcare managed by Lombardia region. So this is a concrete opportunity. The need is um, easy to use automated universal system for moving, moving hospital beds with, uh, uh, that we have described in terms of functionality and performance requirement. So uh, the, the, at the, pre the problem is, that at the present, the present time, moving hospital beds is carried out by pushing or pulling by at least two social health operators. We, and this, uh, this um, uh, result in a high rate of accident and long transport times. We have defined these uh, needs with the Niguarda Hospital, which is one of the biggest hospitals in Italy. So um, we have so defined a problem. The call um, is open, and so uh, I can give you more information. You can find in the website of Regione Lombardia uh, the end for submit the first 
proposal, which is a feasibility study. So you have to define an idea, a solution idea, and you ha can present your uh, feasibility study before the um, uh, 18, I, I check, 18, uh, uh, 8th of June. 8th of June. So um, Lombardia region have decided to optimize his healthcare expenditure, which counts the 70% of this budget of this budget with PCP. So is a concrete action, and we hope uh, to find a big participation from uh, businesses and also university. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to know if there are some questions from the audience. Yes? A few. Please. This, this. Hello. Thank you very much for all this position. It's Alba Puigdomenech from uh, General Directorate of Research of Catalonia, Generalitat of Catalonia. Uh, in our unit, we, we develop the research and innovation plan for <laughs> Catalonia, etc. So I have one question for Sara and another for Rosana. For Sara, um, what about the risk? Innovation always has a high component of risk. R and D more, but innovation too. So we know that public administration, where I work as a technician, as technical, uh, the problems of risk uh, is mm, they don't like risk. So, w what is your experience about all this? Because we always have the history. We we it's difficult to move all all. So, I think it's uh, a challenge very important to begin with this uh, street, but. What is your opinion about the difficulties to begin with all this in other terms? These are not really performed and you are locked in a vendor relationship. This is the biggest uh, risk. With PCP you can manage in terms of sharing risk and this has another phase the sharing of benefit. If you share benefit uh, risk with vendor, you can also share benefit. So in Lombardia region, with this school is uh, expecting to receive a fee, a royalty, uh, a financial compensation proportional to the future commercialization result of the R&D conduct with the businesses. So uh, risk isn't, uh, can be avoided. And this is a good uh, approach to manage a risk. Thank you very much. Another question for you and then for uh, In the slide where you uh, show that there is uh, some, some enterprises who are co competing for the PCP. No? So what about the confidentiality between them? What about cooperation, competition during this phase of process? Okay, PCP is a competitive procedure. So, um, and we have to distinguish the EPRs um, uh, that regard, regard the exploitation of EPRs than the uh, uh, right to use innovation. So, um, IPRs are left given to the businesses because they are the best player to exploit these EPRs. But the public authority can maintain the usage of a set of this right. And this is the legal basis for which after the uh, public procurer could 
uh, launch a PPI procedure in order to buy exactly the solution most perform that he has had the opportunity to test in a um, concrete and real operational context. So we have to distinguish EPRs. The IPRs have to be maintained. So for example, in Lombardy case, we have managed like this. We have say, okay, EPRs are yours, businesses, and we wait six months or five months after the PCP in order to permit you to patent, for example. Then if you don't activate yourself to manage EPRs or to start a commercialization, we have fixed a back, back, um, back call, uh, um, back option of uh, IPRs. So public authority maintain the right to oblige the supplier that is negligent to and that uh, is not so uh, active in commercialization to re recall back these IPRs and give to another player. So you have to respect the, uh, the, the uh, secret, uh, industrial secret, in order to permit businesses to manage in effective way EPRs. But then uh, you can uh, substitute to businesses if they are not able to take the commercialization action. Thank you very much. And then for Rosanna, but there is no question because it was about patentability and all this kind of confidentiality. So I, I have the yes, answer from them. Thank you very much. Very, very short one. Um, you, you are going to issue some calls. Those calls, both of you, I think I understood correctly, Sarah and Rosanna, and um, in those calls, are, are eligible to participate only enterprises. Is that correct? Or are it the centers as well? that uh, are already uh, exploited somehow, are already business driving. What, what I mean is, it's not pure academia. And that pure academia can participate. That's my fear. I'm exactly. an academic, but this is my fear. Exactly. Pure academia can participate together with maybe another business driver. No, but this is important because, for instance, in my, in my case, it's impossible, because really it is impossible unless you are not a, you are not a huge academia to be an expert in security and to be an expert in interoperability for healthcare. So you need to be somehow uh, to partner. It, this is what I expect uh, because it's, uh, mm, it's, you, if you want to be flexible and meet our, our functional requirements and you want to be really an expert in these two fields, it's really difficult to find someone that is a guru in one side that's a guru in the other side. Do you see what I mean? At the end of the day, you have to explore. I think you have to make business out of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So it's just uh, the, the way it goes to the, to, to, to the, to the, to the private, to the business sector. Ex is that correct? Exactly. This is Fatih, what Sarah was saying. Uh, it's important uh, because this will happen also in the cipher. We will need to, uh, I mean, PCP, the idea of PCP is that we are opening market. Okay, so if you're not in market, we have to make sure that who is bidding has, knows how to open market. We cannot just have a, a, a fantastic researcher that doesn't know how to go to business. But a researcher can be associated to a business uh, um, company, to a startup. I, we, the, the important thing is that we know that we want to go to the market, exactly. not, not the sites of the company, okay? The last question. So what, what would be the role of the university? Okay. 
uh, I would like to say one thing. In Italy, we have a sentence that permit university and also our law, uh, procurement law, permit to university to participate in procurement tender. But so we have fixed a condition, a general a selection qualification criteria in our Lex Specialis, which is the tender. And so we have asked to have accounting and organizational structure to ensure the management, exploitation, and or transfer of IEPRs. We have fixed up this condition in order to avoid the risk that you have mentioned. So, so the role of university is present in a free commercial procurement for yes. spaces? In yes, I think a university could have a triple a, a role in PCP, not concurrent, of course, <laughs> for a conflict of interest. The first is that public university have uh, some needs and so can act as contracting authority things, for example, to a learning platform, uh, smart uh, lighting, energy efficiency. Okay. Second, uh, as public procurers as not always aware of newly emerging technology development, university can help. Can help public procurement about promising new technology evolution. So can, uh, can intervene, can work act as an innovation agency and third can participate to some uh, uh, PCP procedure with uh, businesses. The important is that the consortium is formed by business opportunity not because it's required as in state aid or rules uh, or tender. Hi, uh, my name is Lutez Antonopoulos and I am a scientific collaborator at the University of West Macedonia. I have a question for both speakers. Um, would you consider that uh, development of PCP processes, pre commercial procurement, in the Mediterranean area uh, is contradicting with the prevailing EU conditionality that stresses the downsizing of public pro procurement budgets? and? Uh, could you suggest a way of combining the two goals, perhaps by uh, the assumption of risk mitigation uh, at the European level? Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, regarding uh, the, if it goes in, in contradiction with the budget of the public procurement, I don't think so, because really it's not a public procurement. I mean, it's a public procurement, it's true, but for instance, it does not go through the public procurement laws. And, uh, and it is uh, um, somehow a new, I, th I think that we should, from, from a regional perspective or from a country perspective, we should see it as a way to finance uh, 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 or to grant our R&D in a way that is <coughs> business driven, that is, it's, it's come, the, the needs are coming from the public authorities. So we are not doing R&D because uh, we see, I don't know, because uh, now I'm making uh, some, uh, well, without making names of industry, big industry giants, because uh, then uh, the big vendor of the tablet can use it, I don't know where, it is technology driving. Huh? Okay, so usually our R&D is because either European Commission or our funding uh, authorities are somehow defining some, uh, some objective or because we see a trend in the technology industry. In this way, what we are doing is we finance R&D because we have a demand. So I don't think that we are going uh, against uh, at all this public uh, procurement tendency. Are completely two different. I would say that are two different aspects. And, and also stimulate the public authorities, and this is really good and healthy, to think about before buying what they need to buy to make sure that uh, their strategy in 10 years' time, <coughs> five years' time, makes sense. So also we need to somehow uh, educate ourselves on how to buy. And this is also, I don't know, I think it's uh, now it's a moment to do it. It's, uh, 
Um, if there's a question. Sorry, I, I, I didn't catch it exactly. Risk mitigation. Risk mitigation to your level. <clears throat> One thing that uh, uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah already somehow talked about risk mitigation, but one thing that's important is really uh, if you, uh, if what they are, um, it's how the process is done. Because in fact it's three phases. Why it is it's done in three phases? Because we, it's true that before we were talking, we were saying we cannot, uh, um, uh, I don't know, disclose what one bidder is doing with the other. But we are talking continuously with the bidders. Along the three phases, we are maturing the, the, the technology along the three phases. And this is also important, and this is completely different again from the, uh, from the public, uh, normal public procurement, because in a public procurement, then there is a sign, no? You make a call, they, they, they present uh, uh, their bid, and that's all, and then there is a silence. In this, in, in this case, it's completely different. You continuously call, uh, 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 are in contact with the bidders to ensure that they deliver what they are expected to deliver in the plan, in the, in the, in the, plan, in the schedule. And, uh, and, uh, and this is ensure that uh, most probably you can see already that the weakest bidder is not able to deliver or, I mean, the risk already are somehow identified continuously um, uh, monitoring them, and monitoring, monitoring the work they're deliver, the work they're delivering. So, um, also, I think that this is feel, uh, make you feel more comfortable about this. Clearly, it's more work, but this is good. Uh, if the, the work is done because we are more efficient, uh, I mean, I, let's go for it. And, um, and so, also, in this way, I think that the UE money, uh, you, the risk in, at UE level is uh, somehow it makes more sense because we are um, uh, forcing our procurer to buy in a in an appropriate way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosanna. I'm sorry we have to get this session, but uh, this time uh, obliges us. Uh, thank you very much uh, to both of you. I think your contribution and experience are really interesting for this topic. And for sure, we can have uh, the opportunity to maintain some more dialogue in uh, some break.